Hello, my name is Susan Hagnus. I'm a professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Today I want to talk to you about the basics of poster presentations. What you'll learn from viewing this video and the accompanying slides that are posted on, the, uh, on this website is how to design an effective poster and how to present that poster at a poster session in a professional manner. A technical poster is a large visual communications tool. And a poster session is an informal visual interactive forum where the uh, presenter or team of presenters stands next to the poster as viewers come by to uh, learn more about what the uh, poster is about. Slide two shows three photographs of uh, different ways in which posters are being used. The photograph in the upper left corner shows one of my graduate students uh, presenting an overview of his research to Representative Tammy Baldwin, who visited our laboratory a couple of years ago. And you can see that as he's uh, explaining his research to Representative Baldwin, he's pointing to the poster up, posted up on the wall. So that's an example of an informal, uh, small-scale poster session that we held in our research laboratory. The photograph in the center of the slide shows another graduate student from my group standing next to his poster at a uh, technical conference that we attended this last summer. And he was uh, probably one of a hundred presenters at that day's poster session, which ran from 8 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock in the e uh, afternoon. The photograph in the lower right corner shows yet another example of a poster session. This is a, an aerial view of a poster session that was held at the end of the semester in a course that I was team teaching uh, last year. The students had worked on team-based projects and uh, they presented their work in a poster session at the end of the semester. There are several advantages of poster presentations. Uh, first of all, posters allow for a level of personal interaction that you simply don't have with standard platform oral presentations. You can think of a poster as a conversation starter, and it allows you to engage in one-on-one -on -one or small group discussions with your audience. Secondly, poster presentations allow for customized dissemination. You don't have a captive audience that has to sit and listen, through your, listen to your presentation from beginning to end, like you do with a standard oral presentation. In fact, viewers can go backwards and forwards through your poster. They can completely skip over elements of your poster and focus in on the parts that they're most interested in. And thirdly, poster presentations in many ways allow for a broader reach than uh, what you have with a standard platform presentation. A poster session is typically scheduled for a minimum of a, a couple of hours. And uh, so over, that, uh, over the duration of the poster session, your main points can be conveyed to many people. In fact, uh, a poster has a life that goes beyond a poster session. Posters are, are typically uh, hung in research laboratories or in hallways. And so you, your poster will continue to advertise your work long after the poster session has ended. Now there are three really important first steps in preparing a poster. First, read the instructions that are provided by the session organizers, whether the, those session organizers are the instructor in your design course or the a local organizing committee for a technical conference. Those instructions will include very basic information, such as the size of the board that your poster will be attached to. And that gives you guidelines on the size of the poster that you should create. A second very important initial step is to think about your message. Uh, define the essential idea or concept that you want to convey to your audience, and then stay focused on that message. Avoid introducing extraneous details that would distract uh, or detract uh, from your, your main message. And third, know your audience. Uh, your audience may be experts in your field or uh, people working in a field that's similar to yours, or it may be a, a more general audience. And so by knowing your audience, you can uh, provide the appropriate context for your work. If you have a general audience, it's really important to avoid the use of acronyms and jargon. And keep in mind that it's your responsibility to interpret your work and explain its significance on your poster. Don't leave that 
uh, up to the audience to do. Now, an effective poster is not simply a standard research report or design report that is uh, posted up on a board. It's a, a very different type of grammar. It's a visual grammar. A poster shows rather than tells. And so we need to think about uh, some of the effective ways that you can lay out the information uh, on your poster. In other words, what, what are the effective ways to use this visual grammar? The viewer should not have to rely upon your explanation to link together the various sections of your poster. So your job is to organize the content on your poster so that the uh, viewer can easily navigate through your poster. There's a diagram on slide six that I think uh, very effectively shows uh, how to lay out information on your, on your poster. The title and authors is given at the top of the poster. The introductory material is uh, positioned in the upper left corner and the, the uh, concluding material is placed in the lower right corner. And then the material that links the introductory material to the concluding material uh, flows from top to bottom, left to right. And this allows for the most optimal traffic flow with, when the audience is viewing your poster. So use an easy to follow sequence for clarity. I recommend uh, that you use numbers to help order the sections just to reinforce the logical flow that you've adopted in your poster layout. Make the most of section headings. Headings can orient the reader and in fact help convey important points. Now slide seven shows four examples of uh, the use of balance and space in a poster layout. As human beings, we're drawn to symmetry. And so it's, it's only logic, logical to use some form of symmetry in your poster layout, whether that's horizontal symmetry, horizontal and vertical, or diagonal. The example in the lower right corner of slide seven shows an asymmetric layout, which I uh, recommend that you avoid. The, uh, the examples on slide seven also illustrate effective use of space. Um, regions of empty space differentiate and accentuate the different elements of your poster. And so avoid the temptation to fill every single square inch of uh, space on your poster with content. Those blank spaces play almost as important of a role as the uh, filled space on your poster. It's likely that you are uh, communicating complex technical information with your poster. And so the use of graphics can uh, help greatly in that communication process. There are a number of reasons to use illustrations, photographs, charts, and graphs. For example, uh, well-designed graphics can increase audience interest and, in fact, can uh, increase understanding. It's been shown that uh, communication effectiveness increases by as much as 50% with the use of visual aids. Well-designed graphics can also enhance retention of the material that you are uh, presenting with your poster. People retain visual images uh, for longer, far longer than a uh, written word. And graphics can also increase the efficiency of the communication process. But keep in mind that artistry does not substitute for content. So before you invest time in designing uh, a graphical uh, image, ask yourself three important questions. Is it relevant? Does it add information? And is it clear and easy to understand? And of course, if you answer yes to those questions, then uh, by all means, go ahead and invest the time in, in developing that well-designed graphical uh, material for your poster. I think we all know that colors are powerful communication tools. And so um, we uh, want to use color effectively in designing a poster. I recommend that you stick to a theme of two or three colors. Anything more than that will tend to overwhelm or distract your viewer. Also, be easy on the viewer's eyes. Um, use a light background with dark letters for contrast rather than uh, a dark background with light letters. And also avoid overly bright colors. They'll certainly attract attention, but they'll wear out your viewer's eyes. 
And then finally, consider the fact that some people have difficulty differentiating between colors, such as green and red. And so if you're using color as an organizational tool, avoid using uh, colors that are difficult to distinguish. The text on your poster includes the title, the section headings, and the supporting text. I recommend limiting your title to one or two lines so that it doesn't overly dominate the poster. I also recommend that you use sentence case with a title rather than capitalizing every word. It simply makes it easier to read. Again, make the most of section headings. Um, I recommend that you format the headings with a font size that's somewhere in between the font size used for your title and the font size used for the main uh, supporting text. And avoid using bullets for your section headings and, or, or any other sort of punctuation. With the supporting text, it's been found that in cultures that read from left to right, material is most easily digested when the left edge is uh, lined up and the right edge is jagged. So use left justification for that, that supporting text. And also use short sentences, uh, simple words, and, and bullets. And again, with uh, the goal in mind of, of making uh, this dissemination process as easy as possible on the viewer, uh, you want to use or choose your fonts carefully. Sans serif fonts are much easier to read uh, than fonts that have uh, curls and other decorative elements. An example, a very common example, is an Arial font. Some other examples are shown on slide 11. Avoid using multiple font styles in your poster. Use a single font throughout the entire poster to avoid visual chaos. The use of bold, faced, or underlining, or color for emphasis, that all works very well. But I find that italicized text is more difficult to read on posters, so I would recommend avoiding that. And uh, also at the bottom of slide 11, I've listed some example fonts and sizes for a typical three foot by five foot poster. And you'll see that, again, the title uh, has the largest font size, the headings are sort of an intermediate font size, and then the supporting text is the smallest font size. So in summary, an effective poster avoids visual chaos. It guides the viewer by uh, using a visual logic. It has all elements that are visible from several feet away, since that's where your viewers will be standing. And it displays the essential content in the title, the most prominent text, and the graphics. Now, once you've designed your poster and you're ready to head off to your poster uh, session, what are some of the things you want to keep in mind uh, in presenting your poster? Well, I recommend that you do a little preparation before the poster session. Be prepared to give a concise, informative, five to 10 minute overview or tour of your poster to the most interested viewers. Also be prepared to give a, a briefer overview, perhaps a few minutes, uh, to the casual viewer. And as you begin to talk to a viewer, you can gauge whether that person is, is a more interested or a more casual viewer. Don't read the poster, just like you shouldn't read slides in an oral presentation. Use the poster as a visual aid and, aid and not a crutch. And take advantage of the interactive for, format of a poster session. Uh, in particular, you can uh, address questions along the way rather than waiting till the end of your, your overview to address questions. So now you're at the poster session and, and how do you most effectively engage the viewer? I recommend that you allow a few moments once the viewer has arrived at your poster, allow a few moments for that viewer to begin to read and process some information. And then give a friendly invitation offer to guide them through the poster. For example, you could say hello and introduce yourself, and then say, say something like, thanks for stopping by to view my poster. Would you like a guided tour of my research uh, or my design project? That is uh, much more inviting than asking or saying something like, uh, do you have any questions? Even if the person is very interested in your project, he or she won't have had time to come up with questions um, and so don't ask for questions early on. That uh, leads to a dead end in the discussion. Now, at the very end of the accompanying slide presentation, I've included some references and uh, credits. And I encourage you to look at those additional resources as you begin to prepare your poster presentation. 
Hopefully these guidelines and tips will help you deliver uh, your next poster presentation in an effective and professional manner. Good luck.